I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good day, good day, Kevin Estola. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful day? I'm doing great. I'm out in Arizona and it's sunny like it is every day, so (laughs) couldn't be happier. (laughs) That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Kevin, do tell us, which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time? Well, I think we connected because I kind of classify myself as an entrepreneur, but my main company that I own is K12.com and we have been a growing company that focuses on furniture in the education world, but in this past year, I wrote a book about creating better learning environments and started a podcast called Better Learning. So I think that's how how our paths have crossed. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, you say podcaster, I say family. You say family, I say podcaster. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. That's great. Tell us about the podcast and what you do there, please. Yeah, so our podcast called Better Learning, it is really trying to connect all the different silos in education because we get to experience people around the country that are in the K through 12 kind of elementary high school world of private public charter schools but we also work in higher education and in corporate learning kind of corporate training adult learning and there's some really cool stuff that's going on at each level but everyone kind of stays in their silos so kind of the premise of the show is to hear about innovators in education and hope that people take little nuggets to implement into their own world Hmm. We do love the number 12 here uh, tremendously, right? Um, <laughs> where did the inspiration come up to combine the K part with the 12, uh, K-A-Y specifically? Yeah, it, it, really the, the K-12 moniker is typically usually like K kindergarten through 12, which is senior in high school. Right. So the people that are in that education world, they, you know, like they, they refer to that K-12 a lot. And we, you know, I've always liked kind of the play on words and being a little creative. So yeah. we have K-A-Y as kind of our mascot, K, and uh, and she's kind of the guru in education and kind of the, the kind of the brand of the company. Sweet. Great idea. Yeah. I love when creativity is in the background of it. I mean, it's it's 12 years as well as, well, right. So you should be like uh, cultivating that creativity. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So who did you learn this skill from, this skill of being able to... Um, creates a platform for better learning so uh, really I I always kind of go back to this I I always knew I wanted to be I wanted to start a business back then the the term entrepreneur wasn't as big as it is now Um, but I I really kind of learned from my dad Um, he he uh, ran a company and I'd go to work with him all the time and and just kind of learn and and see that he you know like he was able to kind of create his vision and that's something that kind of stayed with me and that I just love creating things and and being able to do it in kind of a win 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 situation where you're you're helping customers and you help you know your team of employees and then you know giving me kind of that that creative outlet to be able to 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 make a living mm-hmm. that's that's kind of been my my model that I've been that I've been focused on. Now you've said words that carry uh, challenges with them, which is helping, which is also employees, right? Um, building teams, definitely challenges. Why will you continue to repeat the skill of bringing hope to others uh, through learning? Uh, but I, again, I, I kind of get, I look at them like there's no losers in, in what I get to do every day, which mm-hmm. is, which is a really cool thing to do is that, you know, I, I've always kind of aligned myself with businesses that have kind of a, a greater mission to it. And to be in something where, you know, like we can actually impact a student's life and, and make a better, better opportunity for them to learn better. It's a pretty cool thing to do and something that kind of drives me and, and everyone that we, we look to hire as a team mm-hmm. onto our team as well. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those where it's like, yeah, I'd much rather be able to do this than, uh, than something that you feel like you're, you're not bringing good to the world. Yeah. Love it. Well, Kevin, tell us one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years. I am a big believer, and it's kind of a, a, a boring one, but something that I got from advice early on in my career is making a list of what you're going to do the next day, the night before. Mm. So it's just been a habit, you know. Even though I'm really into technology, I still have that pad of paper, and 
every day before I kind of wrap up my work day, I write out what I'm going to do the next day and circle kind of the, the main things that need to get done. Mm. Now, have you ever put on that list something that you did already just so that you could put a circle around it? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> it is a good feeling when you actually, like, I, I do something. Actually, I did that last night where I did something already and I get there the first thing. I'm like, oh, that one's already done. <laughs> Yeah, I do fight with that as well. I do fight with that as well. So tell us how it makes you feel when you, you know, just, just, well, there are two parts of it, right? The task of getting it done the night before and then the task of getting the task that you put down there. So how does that make you feel? Oh, it, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's always the, the feeling of like, how do you know if you had a good day or not? And, you know, that's kind of always the measure of that. It's like, you know what, if I said, you know, the night before that I've, I did these things. It was a good day. So that, that's always a good feeling to do that. Now, I'm not going <laughs> to lie and tell you I get through my whole list every day. There's a lot of times where I'm rewriting that list for the next day <laughs> of the things that didn't get done. Yeah. So that doesn't someone, feel so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And suggest to someone out there, why did you consider doing it as well? Um, it's To me, it's just been a great habit. I think um, especially kind of in this technology world, there's so many things and distractions and things that for to me to still kind of have that base of the pen and paper and you know and there's a lot of research that shows too like when you actually write things that you know it, it sticks more so uh, for me that's just been a really good habit to have you know and, and i keep all these binders it's kind of become my little journal yeah. you know, so i can so i can have all these and look back and you know they're, it's just a, a habit that you know I, i've been really hoping my kids pick up on as well well, you do see two things that I do, right? I'm guessing you've seen where I post uh, the conversations I had the day before. You've seen yeah. that, right? And um, I have. Yeah, I use the yellow pads. Do you use yellow pads as well? <laughs> Mine are white pads. White they're, pads. They're typically, yeah, but I think I do have some yellow ones in there. <laughs> yeah, there's something about the yellow that that really gets me going. I like the yellow pads. Yeah, that's uh, great. Yeah. yeah, you have good handwriting too. I've been oh, working thank on you, that. thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, that hey, the type of licks that I got for that um, growing up, like you better write better. It it it, <laughs> it worked. It definitely worked. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, amazing audience, we are live with Kevin Stoller again. He is the podcast host of the Better Learning Podcast. Uh, you could check him out at key12.com. That's K-E-Y 12.com. Uh, Kevin, let's switch gears for a moment now. And let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Kevin, what is your earliest childhood memory? You know, what? I, I always joke around that I have horrible memory. But this morning actually sparked a memory that I told my five-year-old daughter. And, um, you know, it, it's... Uh, kind of a crazy one but it was back in either first or second grade which to me is a little scary that i don't remember anything before that um but one of my best friends jeff grund was he he kind of had a reputation for getting sick at school and uh, there were times where he he had kind of thrown up on his desk or in the hallway and there was one time at the playground where he came running up to me with his with his cheeks puffed out and just kind of waving his arms, like trying to get my attention. And I didn't know what he was doing, so I just kind of ran away. Um, and then he went up to one of my other friends, and my other friend took his hands and just splattered his cheeks together and ended up getting vomit all over him. Oh. And uh, <laughs> so it was, it was definitely, <laughs> definitely not... <laughs> Not the greatest moment, but something that stuck with me to the point where I was repeating that story to my daughter who was saying that she she didn't feel great this morning. Mm. She thought it was funny. Yeah. So you made her laugh in the middle of her feeling sick. Oh, that's intriguing. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So why do you think it's so clear, though, this memory? Uh, uh, well, I think, it, you know, one of the, it's, uh, you know, it, it's there's a lot of action in that. <laughs> Yeah. So, and there's a lot of, uh, yeah, I mean, just thinking back to kind of when that, and then plus just kind of good friends, uh, you know, the two people that are in there, I'm still good friends with. And, 
and it, it's a good uh, thing to reminisce. Probably it's probably been repeated a lot too, which is probably why I remember it yeah, so clearly. Yeah, super cool. Well, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, I love the value of what can occur with storytelling. Um, you know, it's 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 an opportunity to communicate on a level that isn't instructive, where you're saying uh, or instructional, right? Where you're saying you should not do that or you should do this or you should feel well, right? Or you should go to school even though you're sick. But the way that you constructed a story and a message, it's just fascinating that you've decided to help others learn better uh, with what you're doing, even in the K-12 world, even with the Better Learning Podcast. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, there's one. There's a group that I'm a member of called Entrepreneurs Organization. And one of the things I learned from that is being able to share experiences instead of giving advice. And it's, it's something that uh, I, I try to keep conscious in there. It's, it's been a great thing for me to be able to relate to other people instead of just trying to solve problems and be like, you know what, I a time when I felt that, you know, that feeling or that emotion, and this is what I, this is my experience. It might help you. It might not help you. Yeah. I love it. Well, if we fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? Oh, um, man, that was back in like the late 80s. I would say I was just getting into music, but I really liked They Might Be Giants. Hmm. Um, they were they were kind of the cool group that was different from what you'd heard on the radio. So so some of their songs, probably Birdhouse in Your Soul, was the one that, that uh, I, I remember sticking with me the most. Hmm. Love it. Well, it definitely does connect, right? Just like the child where there's a boot house in their soul, you definitely reach out, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, Kevin, we've arrived at our destination, but before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready, Kevin? Sure, go for it. Kevin, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes. Are you married? Yes. Do you have children? Three children. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes, I do. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. How about three hours a week? Yeah, I'd probably say five to seven a week. What about screen time, the phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Probably less than eight. If you get a chance to get out and see people too. <laughs> yeah, that always helps. <laughs> <laughs> that always helps. <laughs> if you, Kevin, had to share with us your own unique real estate matter, if you going to represent Kevin Stoller, what would you say that is? That would be, um, actually my wife, we moved from Ohio to Arizona and we've been saying all year long is that we don't want a boring life and our motto has been go big or no home hmm. so love it. so that's that's kind of the way we've been living there this here lately love it kevin this was a great pleasure my friend before you leave is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience i just really love what you're doing i think we were saying before that you are you know like i love hearing about people who set big goals and then actually make it happen so it's it's really inspiring love what you're doing yeah, I appreciate it too, right? It's um, go big or go home, right? Like, it's so important. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, our, ours is go big or no home. Oh, so. no home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we don't, we hope it's not the no home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love it. Well, Kevin. <laughs> What's your wife's name? Darcy. Darcy, I love it. I love what you just put out there. Yeah, I think it'll be go big. I don't think it'll be no home, right? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Stola, thank you, my friend, for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Great. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.